So, <laughs> welcome back for the second half of the Mulan uh, video. Um, this one will be about the uh, House of Mouse stuff, Sophia the First, Kingdom Hearts, Wreck-It Ralph, Once Upon a Time, Descendants, and then the 2020 live action version that they did. Um, so, hopefully not as long as the first one, but still, you know, we'll see what happens. Um, slightly different things behind me. No dragons or food dogs this time, but I do have a panda because China. I don't have any stuffed phoenix. For all the stuff that I have, I don't have a phoenix. I need to get a stuffed phoenix or I guess like a stuffed, you know, fletchender or fletchling or something or a talon flame maybe. Um, you know, something phoenix-ish that's big enough that you can still tell what it is in the background. However, <laughs> I did manage to find one of my fans. Um, I think I got this fan uh, like after my when I graduated high school. My dad took me on like a trip to Colorado, and they have like a botanical gardens there that we went to, and they were having like a, a Chinese or a Japanese exhibit, and they had you know lots of pretty fans that you could pick from. I either got this one or a different one that I, when I was there, I have a couple of fans and I don't remember if it was specifically this one or if I got this one somewhere else. Um, I don't know if this one is necessarily from China or not, but you know, it, it's pretty and I like it. And yeah. <laughs> so this is going to go back here and get the balance with the panda. Stay. There we go. That works. So, so moving on to some of the uh, little miscellaneous things for uh, Mulan. Uh, so first off, we have House of Mouse. Uh, Mulan, Mushu, and Cricky all make several appearances throughout House of Mouse. Um, here's one of them all together. Uh, there's also another moment in the series where like they're doing like a demonstration on sports and Mulan comes up on stage and helps demonstrate some martial arts. Um, there's also another moment where it's like a, it's the a snowed into the house of mouse and everybody's doing what they're thankful for. And Mushu is like, you know, I'm thankful for Mulan for making me a big star and, you know, I don't remember. I think Shang maybe appears at some point, but not too much. I know Mulan's father appears at some point. Um, but you know, it's, you know, it's, you know, they're, they pop up every now and then. Um, then we move on to Sophia the first, um, Mulan, as do all of the Disney princesses, as far as I'm aware, have appeared in, uh, Sophia the first, um, uh, well, all the Disney princesses that existed when Sophia the first was on, I don't know if Sophia the first is actually still on or not. Um, but Mulan was there in one episode. She, it looks to be like some kind of a safari or a jungle expedition episode. And Mulan helps Sophia, you know, whatever lesson that she needs to learn. Um, then we have Kingdom Hearts. Um, Mulan does not appear in the original Kingdom Hearts game. Mushu is a summon though in the Kingdom Hearts game in the original. Um, and then when you go into Kingdom Hearts 2, you go to basically, you know, the, the, Chinese, you know, China is the name of the world that you go to, and that's where you interact with Mulan and Shang and, you know, the Gang of Three and Mushu again. And, uh, you, you know, you help the Emperor, you know, you and the others, you know, join the Imperial Army, you know, you help Mulan as Ping join the Imperial Army, and, you know, you have to fight around the campsite a lot, and, you know, so there's a lot of, you know, there's fighting around different areas that are kind of based off of areas from the movie, of course, but also just like you know, landscapes from China um, that they use throughout the series, or that they use in that uh, part of the game. Um, I don't remember when it is exactly that, like, um, Sora and the others figure out that Mulan is a girl, or if it takes a little while, like, you know, they don't realize that Mulan is a girl. He's referred to as Ping, um, or whatever. I'm not 100% sure. I don't remember. Um, but, you know, you, you join the army with uh, Mulan, Ping, and or, you know, you, you, know pl you help her with that, and you help with fighting the Heartless and fighting Shanu, and, you know, working your way through that. Shanu is one of the bosses that you have to fight. Um, and then later on, you know, and his Heartless and everything, and, you know, you have to save Shang at some point, and then you have to, uh, you know, Mushu, unfortunately, reveals Mulan's true identity, 
and uh, you know that you know Mulan, you know, kind of the same thing. You know, Mulan, you know, is left behind, but she saved his life, so he's not going to kill her. And then you know they still have to go, and they still help at the you know the help save the emperor and everything. Although unfortunately, you don't get Sora, Donald, and Goofy having to dress up um, like the Gang of Three did in uh, dresses and everything. That would have been funny, but no. Um, but you know they they help with that. They help save the emperor. Um, and then you, uh, in Kingdom Hearts 2, as, as I said, as I've mentioned before, is where Organization 13 comes into play, and you deal with a cloaked man who is an enemy, who's from a Organization 13, um, you, you deal with them on quite a few of the different worlds, um, but then, you know, then you have to fight these other giant heartless that come, that come along, and, you know, you fight your way around the Imperial Palace, and you help the Emperor, and you know and you help Mulan and she gets to be in your party and everything and at one point you know it, you know she starts off as Ping is in the party and then it changes and Mulan is in the party instead and Mulan actually has uh the the sort of the ancestors is one of the things that she earns um as she uh, gets stronger um and then she you know she has that as something you can equip to her and, uh, you know, later on, um, you have, or I think it's uh, Mulan, yeah, gives support to Sora when he, you know, leaves to go to tr try to find Riku and Kairi. Um, so she's, you know, being supportive and a friend and everything. Uh, the end bit that comes with that for, like, the Mulan world is we still have Mulan and Shang having a, a romantic moment. And there's this bamboo grove that you go to a lot. Like, that's where, like, one of the healing and save points are and where, you, you know, where one of the um, stores is and everything. And, you know, the, the gang of three, unfortunately, interrupt them um, <laughs> because they're spying on Mulan and Shang. But you still kind of get the romantic moment there. Um, I don't remember if Mushu appears in anything else. Um, I don't think he's a summon in Kingdom Hearts 3. Um, I'm sure there's some other references that come up to Mulan and things, but, you know, like, they, they pop back up in, like, flashback sequences or, like, in the moments when they're, like, showing all these different memories and everything. But there's not too much else. Um, I do think that they got, well, I don't think that they got Eddie Murphy to come back and voice, you know, Mushu for this, but, you know, Ming-Na Wen came back and did Mulan for it. I think uh, the other actors came back to do you know, the different, um, you know, Shang and the Gang of Three. Um, but there's not too much else that happens with that. It's just a fun little world to run around in. Um, it's, you know, <laughs> fun to kill Heartless and, you know, with this, you know, with a, you know, with an Imperial member of the army on your side. Um, that's kind of fun to do. Uh, and then we're going to move into Wreck-It Ralph. Um, Mulan is, of course, there with all the other princesses and Ralph breaks the internet in the Oh My Disney area where, of course, Penelope goes, as I've said multiple times, um, Mulan has her, uh, when, uh, Penelope appears in the waiting room where the princesses are in their dressing room, uh, Mulan is there, and she points the, uh, the sword of Shanu directly at, uh, Penelope when all the princesses are ready to attack Penelope, which I'm like, I do like the fact that in that scene they put in the, okay, the princesses can defend themselves, and I like that, and I just find that funny. Um, yeah, I just, I just, yeah. Yay! Um, but uh, what ends up happening is, um, you know, this, you know, they, you know, Mulan and the others, you know, they, they become friends with Penelope, and then of course they get their other comfy clothes and everything, and uh, <laughs> and uh, it, it's, you know, it's just fun thing that happens, you know. They, you know, they get all their comfy clothes, and uh, what is it that Mulan's has on it? Uh, Mulan's doesn't have too much on it. It's just like a, a red jacket with, like, black leggings um, and sneakers and, you know, there's not too much. She's got, like, a little bit of, you know, she's got, like, on the lapels of the jacket, she's got, like, little gold designs that resemble a uh, Mushu. Um, not too much. I don't think she has anything that has, like, words on it or anything. Um, but then later when they're doing the, uh, when, when they have to save Ralph when he's falling, you know, all the princesses contribute something. Uh, Mulan's is that she, um, she, uh, takes, okay, so it's, um, so Snow White has the ability to, um, come up with a ton of, like, apples on demand that are, like, poisoned apples. I'm like, okay. But, like, Mulan, like, 
dices of the apples, and then they used those to melt ropes that had, like, the... <laughs> that were, like, holding the dresses for, like, um... <laughs> holding the dresses for, like, um, Ralph to fall into. So they, they use that way. Uh, you know, they, they, you know, they dice, you know, that's what Mulan gets to do. Um, at one point, uh, when they're all lounging about in the, the princess's area, in the, you know, in the princess's dressing room, um, you know, Mulan, uh, comments that, uh, Vanellope is a little bit pitchy when she's singing, um, which is just kind of funny because, you know, some of the princesses, can sing in their actual voices you know some of them do have the actual actress that was able to sing for them Mulan is one of the ones that could not because Ming Na Wen as awesome as she is she does not sing and you know the lady that voices Jasmine she couldn't sing so they had you know they had to have the same lady Leia Salonga uh, come in to voice uh, for the singing portions for them which is perfectly fine in my opinion um you know, but so, so they, you know, they all become friends with Vanellope and then they help save Ralph and everything and, you know, become friends with Ralph because he's Vanellope's friend and, you know, so that's basically where that ends. Um, then we get to move on to Descendants. Um, I know that by technicality, timeline was like in regards to like productions that Once Upon a Time came before Descendants, but we're going to do Once Upon a Time after Descendants and then the live action movie, because the live action movie will take a little bit longer to talk about. Um, so we have Descendants. Um, Mulan and Shang do appear in Descendants, but they're like background characters. They're not really like prominent. Uh, the prominent one from the uh, Mulan line is Lonnie, who is uh, Mulan and Shang's daughter. Um, we are introduced to her in the first Descendants movie. And then um, she's kind of revealed to, um, well, I think it's still kind of, you know, the, the high schooler is still, you know, trying to figure out if they're comfortable in their own skin and everything. And she seemed okay with the villain kids coming, uh, coming to, you know, coming to Oridon Prep. But uh, she ends up going to Mal, and Mal has this, you know, her spell book, and she can, you know, use some of the spells to give people, you know, cool hair. And she does that for... First she does it for Jane, then she does it for Lonnie, and then she does it for a bunch of the other girls um, to give them, you know, really cool hair. Mine is not cool, but gives them really cool hair, and she does that to Lonnie at first. And then later on in the first movie when uh, the, you know, the core four are trying to, you know, make a, a love potion to give to Ben, they need a tear of, you know, genuine human emotion. And Lonnie comes in. And, you know, they're, they're talking and everything, and she sees that they're baking cookies, and she, like, makes a comment of, you know, Lonnie kind of ends up getting sad because she's like, well, didn't your parents ever, you know, bake you cookies or anything like that? And, you know, the core four are just like, no, no, but our parents never did that. No. I mean, you know, Evie's mom taught her how to cook because that was one thing that, you know, the, the, that, you know, that the evil queen thought it was like, oh, the, the, you know, you have to, you have to know how to cook to make a husband happy type of a thing. Um, uh, side note, at least Lonnie's name did not start with an S or an M. So Mulan and Shang get points for that, for, you know, not having their kid named something else that has like M in the title, uh, uh, you know, M or S in the title, which I'm like, okay, good. Some of the parents understand the concept of you don't have to give your child the same a name that starts with the same letter as your name. Progress, people. Um, you know, some of the some of the parents get credit for that. Some of them don't. Mulan's parents do. Um, but you know, so but what ends up happening is you know, Lonnie ends up crying, and then you know, they you know steal her tear and use it in the potion. Um, to make the cookies to give to Ben to make him fall in love with Mal. Um, and then, you know, later on, uh, you know, she's there at, you know, Ben's coronation and she witnesses what Mal and the others do to fight off Maleficent. And then in the second movie, um, we have it that, as I mentioned in the Aladdin video, we have Jay, who is the head of, or is the team captain of the fencing team. Uh, Lonnie wants to join the fencing team. She's very good. Um, and, you know, Chad is being rude and he just doesn't think that she should be on the team because she's a girl. And, you know, Mulan proves herself throughout the course of the movie. She helps them save Ben and Mal and everything from the Isle of the Lost. And, you know, she stands with 
um, well, she's uh, Jay's date to the, the cotillion or whatever it is that they're having. Um, that's the climax of the movie. She's Jay's date to that. And when it appears that Uma had, you know, it appear, you know, Uma cast the love spell on Ben, that, you know, Lonnie is one of the ones that stands with Mal. Uh, because, you know, at this point in time, Mal and the core four, the other core four are her friends. And, you know, so she's, she's going to stand with Mal in that instance, as opposed to, you know, her king. She, you know, they can tell that something's up with Ben and she's going to stand with Mal, which I like. Um, and then the end of the movie is, or well, the, the end bit for, you know, Lonnie is that, as I mentioned in the J, in the J section on the Aladdin, um, J, it, J kind of demotes himself from captain. So there's still eight men on the team. But Lonnie is now the new captain, and therefore Jay or Chad cannot complain. So we have, you know, Jay and Lonnie doing that. Um, Lonnie, unfortunately, does not appear in the Descendants 3. I would have liked it if she did. I think she would have been a great one to have there with, you know, helping fight off, you know, helping to deal with um, Aubrey and then, you know, helping with everything with that. I would have liked that. I just like Lonnie. I think she's a fun character. Um, she's, you know, in the Descendants animated series, of course. Most of the casts are in the animated series. Um, but, you know, they just didn't have her in, you know, three. As as I've said, if they ever ended up being able to do a Descendants, you know, four, if unfortunately, you know, the guy that played, Car the boy that played Carlos hadn't, you know, died, that, you know, I'm pretty sure that they could have had it that, like, maybe Lonnie was... Jay's date to like the wedding for you know Ben and Mal um I'm pretty sure they had something about that in the works and then unfortunately as I said the the, the boy that played Carlos died of course as I mentioned in the you know 101 Dalmatians videos um but you know I, I you know Lonnie may have gone off and been you know Jay's date to the wedding that would have been nice um you know maybe would have seen her parents have him have to like have him have to meet her parents, you know, this, you know the, the woman that, you know, saved China and everything. Oh, uh, I think it was revealed on uh, the Isle of the Lost. I think at some point they do like a map of the Isle of the Lost. And you see that like Shanu, where he lives, is actually not too far away from like where Jay's father lives, from where uh, Jafar's um, pawn shop is. So I'm like, okay, <laughs> that'd be an interesting, that'd be interesting. Um... I'm gonna grow up next to the guy who is kind of the re who's the villain of the girl that I'm gonna end up dating later on. Okay. Yeah, but you know we get that and everything. Um, then we move on to Once Upon a Time. Um, Mulan makes her first appearance in Once Upon a Time at the beginning of season two. Um, she is introduced along with Prince Philip and Aurora. Um, her and Prince Philip have been traveling to try to find Aurora and, you know, they find Aurora and Prince Philip wakes up Aurora and, you know, Aurora is like, okay, who's this other person with you and why is it a girl? And she's, you know, kind of skeptical of Mulan for a little while and it takes them a little while to fully trust each other, um, mostly because, like, Mulan keeps treating Aurora like she's fragile which, you know, you just slept for however many years, um, by technicality, if you actually understand the way the series works. A lot of people slept for a while in this, but it was for a different reason. Um, as opposed to a curse that was a sleeping curse. It was kind of like, you know, frozen in time type of a thing. Um, but, you know, so Mulan and Philip help with that, and they get Aurora. And then, unfortunately, they are attacked by what is referred to as a wraith. And that's just, you know, something that steals souls. And, you know, it, it attacks Philip. And then Philip, unfortunately, quote unquote, dies. And they, you know, put him away. Well, they, they set him aside. He's left in a place to rest uh, where, you know, Aurora had rested for so long. And then they, then they end up meeting um, Emma and Snow. Because Emma and Snow got brought through from Storybrooke. And now, um, you know... Mulan and Aurora blame them for, you know, Philip dying. Um, a little bit later on, in still in season two, um, we are introduced to the story of how Mulan and Philip met, um, which actually involves Belle. Um, so part of Belle's timeline is, that, you know, at one point she was kind of a servant to 
Rumpelstiltskin, and she fell in love with him, and she tried to break the curse, but then he, you know, sent her away, and then she spends a little bit of time on her own, kind of, not necessarily on the run, but kind of on her own. She makes friends with uh, Dreamy, who would later be called Grumpy, um, and helps him with something, and then he tells her that she should go and, you know, find her own adventure, and she goes off to go and fight this thing called a uh, Yogawai. Looks like a weird flaming lion type of thing. Um, and she ends up meeting Mulan in the process. And, you know, because, you know, Belle is, of course, very smart. And the two of them end up kind of getting along. Um, Mulan is very, you know, physically strong and, you know, clever when it comes to hunting things. Belle is, you know, very good when it comes to, like, kind of narrowing down the search for where the creature might be. And then, you know, Belle's the one that ends up having to fight the Yagwe because Mulan got injured. And she turned, you know, has fairy dust and she ends up turning the Yagwe back into human. And it's revealed to be Philip. And then Philip and Mulan go off to go and try to find Aurora. Um, and, you know, Mulan and Aurora help Belle and Emma get back to Storybrooke. You know, they, you know, they go through a whole lot with that. And Aurora and Mulan bond. And Aurora and Mulan then go on a journey to try to find, um, you know, to try to uh, restore Philip's soul so he's no longer dead. And so that's, that's fun. And uh, they do, they accomplish this and then Aurora and Philip are able to then get married and, you know, Mulan is very happy for them. And she watches as, you know, they kind of start rebuilding their kingdom and the remnants of what was the, you know, the enchanted realm, the enchanted forest. Um, they start rebuilding that, and Mulan is there to support them. And, you know, throughout this, we actually, you know, we interact a little bit more. You know, they meet um, Neil, who is actually Balefire, who is Rumpelstiltskin's son. Um, we, you know, see a whole lot of other things with that. Um, you know, we, you know they, they do a lot of, um, you know, jumping around, of course, in time and once upon a time. Um, between Storybrooke and between, um, you know, between Storybrooke and between the Enchanted Forest and the other, you know, the other worlds, other realms and everything. And, you know, so we learn a bit about the, you know, the character's history and bits and pieces and such, and then you can kind of like string them together based on the context of, you know, what's going on with the other characters, which is kind of interesting to watch. Um, but, you know, Mulan and Aurora and Philip have a very good friendship. And at one point, it's actually revealed that Mulan has a crush on Aurora and kind of seems to be in love with Aurora. <sighs> eh, I'm okay with this. Um, I'm perfectly fine with Disney doing that. I mentioned uh, a couple of videos ago in the, in the uh, Fox and the Hound that, you know, Ruby, who is, you know, the, the Ruby, who is a little red riding hood is, you know, she falls in love with, um, you know, Dorothy from the Wizard of Oz and you know so they end up together but in this case you know it's we have Mulan and Aurora but Aurora is in love with Philip and there's you know a few other things that happen with that and at some point you know Mulan kind of leaves to go off on another journey we get like a slight reference to the fact that you know she had been in the Emperor's Imperial Army at some point and she helped defeat Shanu and the Huns and everything uh, and you know so we work through that but what ends up happening is she ends up later on, she ends up coming across Mirida. Uh, Mirida is in a conflict with, you know, <laughs> King Arthur. But yeah. Um, uh, but, you know, we have, you know, during all the journey that Mulan had with Aurora and with Emma and Snow, you know, they dealt with Korra, who is, of course, Regina's mother, who's the Queen of Hearts. Um, Mulan is very determined to protect Aurora. Um, because that was, that's, that's her new goal in life. She helped Philip find her and then she is now, she has taken it upon herself to protect Aurora. Um, and then of course, you know, later on they're able to, you know, heal, you know, fix Philip and bring him back to life and everything. And, um, uh, Mulan even at one point is, uh, about ready to, kind of betray Emma and Snow in order to protect Aurora for various reasons. Cora has uh, Aurora's heart. And, you know, if, if, if Cora so chooses, she can... 
and then Aurora's dead. And you can't bring someone back from that. They've stated that in Once Upon a Time. You can't fix someone that way. Once the heart's crushed, the person is gone. Um, even in the Frankenstein aspect. Yes, Frankenstein is in Once Upon a Time. Uh, but like, so they deal with that a lot. And, you know, eventually, you know, it's, they, they become, Mulan puts a lot more trust in uh, Emma and uh, Snow. But, you know, after Emma and Snow go back, then they, you know, they fix Philip, bring him back to life. They build up the kingdom. And then, you know, Aurora, or uh, Mulan, she's very happy for Aurora and Philip, but she's also, you know, it's like she's kind of in love with Aurora. And, but she knows that Aurora and Philip are very much in love and very happy together. And they're pregnant because uh, Aurora tells Mulan that she's pregnant. And of course, it's Phillips. Um, I don't ever quite think that uh, Aurora figures out that Mulan has feelings for her. Um, I wouldn't put that off as like Aurora being, um, I guess, um, an observant, but she kind of only has eyes for Philip. And she still likes, you know, Mulan as a friend and still trusts her as a friend. It's just she, it didn't, I don't think it ever quite clicked for Aurora that, oh, Mulan likes you. Um, but, you know, so that, you know, Mulan leaves at one point and she goes off on her own journey again. And she ends up, as I said, coming across Mirida, which allows me to talk a little bit more about Mirida. Uh, Mirida had been in a conflict with King Arthur, um, which I think think I remember I mentioned a little bit of that in the Sword in the Stone video. I know I mentioned uh, King Arthur there. Um, I, I, I think I did. Um, I think I remember talking about King Arthur and Merlin in the um, King in the Sword in the Stone video. But, um, you know, so they, you know, Mirida is in a conflict with him, with Camelot. And, uh, a, you know, Mulan ends up helping her against, um, you know, helps him or helps uh, Mirida against uh Arthur and you know so that kind of you know they help with that and everything and at one point also Mulan helps Ruby and when or not Wendy uh Ruby and um uh Dorothy um you know so it's like Mulan's kind of like okay well we need someone with a sword that can help these guys um Mulan let's give him Mulan that'll help uh so you know Mulan kind of travels about she's like a wandering swordsman type thing um you know swordsman for hire goes after things um helps people as she goes and you know so she you know finds a whole bunch of other stuff that has to deal with that she, as I said she helps you know Mirida she helps Belle um you know she t helps take care of King Arthur she helps you know, Ruby and Dorothy and everything and Oz and, you know, she, you know, helps with a whole bunch of other stuff. The last time that we kind of uh, see Mulan is just we see her um, in Oz after Ruby helps awaken Dorothy with True Love's Kiss. And then uh, Snow uh, needs to go back to um, Storybrooke for whatever reason. It, it was during the same time when they were like in in the underbrook with you know dealing with Hades and everything it was in that same time frame they you know go home via different path um and they end up you know and that's kind of the last that we see of Mulan although it is kind of assumed that um as with the other um people uh, the other um you know enchanted kingdoms and everything that they ended up in the united um enchanted realms that regina makes at the end of the final season uh so it's kind of implied i would assume that like mulan is there um mushu does not appear in the series there is a character who's called the dragon who i think is supposed to be a reference to mushu i could be wrong on that but i think that's what it's supposed to be and uh what ends up happening is he you know, he's kind of there. He's like a medicine man and everything. He, you know, helps Pinocchio at some point. He helps these other people that are people from, you know, the, the non-magic world, our world, that know about magic and, you know, causes problems with that. He tries to help Regina at some point, And there's just a, a, a bunch of other problems that happen with it, um, with him. And I do think at some point he does die um for various reasons i don't remember exactly what um or how but they they have him there i think he's the main reference to uh, mushu and once upon a time as far as i'm aware 
Which, now that we're finished with Once Upon a Time, brings us to Mulan 2020. <laughs> um, took a while for me to finally watch this. Did eventually end up getting to watch it on a Disney, uh, not from Disney Plus, but, you know, watched it on D on a video, on a, you know, VHS video. <laughs> DVD. DVD, that's right. I'm old enough to remember VHS. I, you know, still have some. Um, but, so we have, um, you know, we're entered, you know, takes, you know, made in, you know, came out in 2020. Um, it is set um, a little bit more, I would say it's a little bit more accurate in regards to, like, the, you know, historical accuracies for China. There's still kind of magic that comes into play, of course, because, um, you know, it's there's still some magic that's there. It's not a musical. Um, it's one of the ones where they did not keep it a musical, and I'm, I was perfectly fine with that. Um, I'm, you know, I was, I had no problem with the fact that they didn't have it be, uh, you know, a, a musical version. I'm like, hey, you know, they still use beautiful moments from the score in it. I mean, throughout the course of the movie, if you're familiar with the original score, you know, the songs and everything from the original, you do tend to pick up a few, you know, things that weave their way in. There's moments where like, you know, the you know, the, un the melody and the tune from, like, you know, Honor to Us All brings in, and then Reflection is there, and, you know, you know, the, the I'll Make a Man Out of You sequence and everything, you know, because they still have the training sequence and everything, and that get kind of weaves in there at times, um, and I just, you know, there's, there's a crescendo moment in the film where it's just, I think, like, Reflection is just, like, it's not sung or anything. They, they use, like, end credit songs. They have Reflection as one of the end credit songs, and I'll talk about that at the end of the movie. But there's, like, a moment in the movie where, you know, it's Mulan is actually, you know, finally coming to terms with everything. And I think, if I remember correctly, I think they do use Reflection coming into that. Um, you know, it's not like, they don't have, like, Chris, uh, Christina Aguilera still does sing it, but it's not, it's just, like, the... The, the, it's just the melody of it that comes in, and it's still very beautifully done. Um, so the more premises of it is um, the instead of it being Fa Mulan, it is um, Hua. I think I'm pronouncing that correctly. Um, I'm just going to go with the you know Mulan and everything. Um, but uh, so we're introduced a little bit more. We see her running around as a child. Um, in the movie, we are introduced more to the concept that is called Chi which um is just kind of like a power of you know the soul coming out and she is more something that is meant to be in boys and that if it's in girls is looked as as looked at as witchcraft and we get a duality with this with mulan and i'll explain that um but we have her father who can tell that she has chi and he kind of encourages that with her um he still you know he still loves her very much in this mulan does not have any brothers as she, you know same thing with the animated she doesn't have any brothers she has a younger sister in this one who is much more the uh you know the the the, the perfect daughter that you know her parents had intended um we don't see a grandmother in this one but the mother is still very prominent of course um you know her you know you know, Zoo is still her, you know, her father is still there. Um, but um, we get a little bit of a difference. Um, we're introduced a little bit more to, like, the community around them. And I just, I love the building that they designed for this to, like, film in for part of it for, like, the village. And I just think it's, I just think it's gorgeous what they did with it. Because it's this 100, you know, 360 degree set that they built and then they like use all of it like when they're running around because at one point Mulan as a kid is like running around trying to you know get a chicken back into its pen and she's like jumping up and down and up and up and up and up and over the roof and everything and, like almost falls but catches herself and still able to get the chicken back to where it needs to be um unfortunately she ended up uh their family shrine is actually instead of it being like a dragon that's their um their a dragon that's their um symbol it's actually a phoenix that is a, that is their symbol and unfortunately she ended up like breaking part of the phoenix's wing on the statue and that night you know she's a little more 
you know, she's, you know, she's sorry for it and everything. Like, everybody in the village watched this happen and everything. But, like, that night she has a conversation with her father and she's still a kid at this point in time. And he's, like, sitting there, like, fixing the wing, you know, getting it, you know, like, glued back on and, like, propping up the wing so it'll, you know, just, you know, so the resin will set so it'll, you know, fix the wing and everything. And he's, like, he's not, like, mad at her or anything, but he's, like, they're having a, you know, they have a conversation about the fact of, you know, the, you know, girls are supposed to do this and everything and you know as much as i am you know very proud of you and everything you know this is not quite exactly you know the way that a girl should act and that it is kind of your you know your duty to have to marry into a you know a good family and bring you know you know bring sons into the world and everything you know continue our family bring honor to our family and so we have that conversation with, you know, young Mulan and her father. And then we cut ahead a few years and, you know, Mulan is now grown up, but we are introduced to kind of the, uh, the villain of the story, um, whose name is uh, Bori Khan. He is a barbarian and him and his forces, you know, you know, are riding toward the Great Wall. Um, and he's, um, you know, they're, they're able to... Um, bypass certain defenses because they actually have a witch working for them um in the original movie in the animated movie um you know shere khan had his hawk in or shere khan that's jungle book shanu shanu has his hawk and in this one um there is a character who is actually the witch that can transform into a hawk um she is a shapeshifter for the most part she shapeshifts into hawks uh, into a hawk mostly but she also shapeshifts into um other people i don't know if it's necessarily shapeshifter she just kind of like takes them over um and i unfortunately cannot pronounce her name for the life of me um but i'll attempt to later at some point um but she she's referred to as a witch because she can use she and you know she helps bori khan because he has promised that you know if you help me with this then, you know, once I take over China, he wants to avenge the emperor because the emperor killed his father and now he wants to kill the emperor. And, you know, him and the other um, uh, uh, ruins, I think are what they're called, um, you know, they want, of course, revenge on China, but they also just want to kill a lot of people and they tend to kill, you know, they keep attacking these different garrisons that are, you know, the different protection points. Um, you know, she will infiltrate the garrison as like a soldier and then she will cause a disruption inside and then they will attack from the outside and then, you know, just basically slaughter everybody there. And of course the emperor gets, um, you know, news of this and he sends out, you know, the conscription notices and everything to go and, you know, rally the troops and such and bring in new recruits, um, you know, to, you know, to, you know, get everything better and everything, uh, so they can, you know you know, protect their country, um, and, you know, uh, um, you know, we, we kind of get where that goes, um, Mulan is still very much, she's still kind of a, you know, a, a you know, what, you know, free spirit type thing, um, she still has her horse, who is not named Khan, that, or Khan, he's, um, Black Wind is what he's referred to as, and it's getting to the point where it's time for Mulan to go and, you know, meet the matchmaker. And we get a uh, sequence that is very reminiscent of the Honor to Us All sequence. Um, and I think they actually play, like, the undertones a little bit of uh, Honor to Us All in the sequence. We have, you know, Mulan, you know, hair up, getting you know, all the, you know, we watch as, like, they apply all the face makeup and everything to her and all the you know, the symbols and everything that get painted onto her skin and, you know, get her hair all done up and into the beautiful outfit that she has to wear, which is, is uh, you know, I do like the outfit and she looks very beautiful um, once they get her all dressed and everything for the, for the, you know, to go and meet the matchmaker. And she, she tries very hard. Um, her mother and her sister are there uh, with the matchmaker. Um, we find out when they were little, um, in the sequence where we see her and her sister as uh, kids, we find out that her sister does not like spiders. And during the matchmaking, uh, when they're visiting the matchmaker, there's this spider and, you know, Mulan, of course, wants to, you know, not have her sister panic. And she, like, moves this teapot and she, like, puts it on top of the spider so the spider can't go after her sister. 
And the matchmaker gets kind of angry about this and makes Mulan put it back. And then, of course, the spider is there and everybody freaks out. And, you know, I think, I don't remember if it's like, well, it's like all of the, the tea set, the teapot and all the cups and everything get like tossed into the air. And like Mulan, without even thinking, like pulls out some of her hairpins and like catches all of the cups and has like her foot in the air and like she catches the teapot behind her and she's like balanced. But then her uh, hairdo comes undone and she, you know, still drops everything. So everything still breaks, but she like caught everything. And of course the, the matchmaker blows up at them, you know, you know, blah, 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 blah. You know, you're, you know, the same thing as, you know, it's like you're, you know, you're never going to be a bride and everything. You're, you know, dishonor to your family and everything. And, you know, she, you know, she was trying to protect her sister from the spider and, you know, you know, so it's, you know, she's uh, problems. And of course, you know, that is, you know, her father had had great hope for her. Um, but you know, that didn't work out, unfortunately. And she was, she was you know, the whole village kind of saw her, them coming out, um, from the matchmaker. And that's of course, when the, you know, the, the guards show up, the, the army show up and they're, you know, getting, you know, all the different people that are supposed to come in, you know, these sons from these other families are coming in, of course, Fazu, Hwanzu, uh, Mulan's father, uh, doesn't have any sons, and at one point, you know, he goes up, and he's still injured, like in the original movie, he's still injured, and he has this, um, uh, brace on his leg, um, that is supposed to help him walk, and he still has a cane that he uses to walk, and he, you know, tightens up the brace enough that he's able to walk um, without the cane and you know the the soldier is looking at him and he's like you have no sons and he's like I am blessed with two daughters I will fight and you know shows again how much love he has for his daughters and you know Mulan's watching this and you know when he's walking away from getting his conscription notice he unfortunately he kind of falls at one point and uh you know falls stumbles whatever and you know her mother you know Mulan wants to rush to help him and I think her sister does too and like her mother holds them back like you know don't don't show him any more dishonor than kind of you already have or than he's already shown with falling and everything you know don't show you know don't 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 sh don't make that apparent anymore and you know he's ready to you know the, the, the guards leave and everything, the soldiers leave, and we have, you know, Mulan and her father end up having a conversation. He's getting ready to, you know, head off to war and everything. And he has this sword that had been a gift from him from the emperor so many years ago um, that is, it's engraved with like the, the things that are, you know, supposed to be like the, the basics, uh, the basis of, you know, the Chinese culture, you know, loyal, brave, and true. Um, because her father had, you know, prove that he was that it's the it's the sword that we still see in the animated movie it's just it's a little more you know finely detailed and still beautiful um it has you know loyal brave and true written on it and you know Mulan has seen this sword her entire life she knows what it means she knows it was an honor for her father to be given this sword and you know Mulan still makes the decision of I'm going instead of my father she takes the conscription notice, leaves her comb, you know, takes the armor, and leaves. We get a little more of um, detail in regards to what Mulan would have done. Um, they don't show this in the original movie, but we show we are shown Mulan, like, wrapping herself up and everything to, you know, cover, um, to, you know, hide that she is a woman. And, you know, and you know, we see her traveling and making her way to the camp. Uh, we see her standing in line. We're introduced to, you know, throughout the a little bit of the introduction here into the camp, we are introduced to, of course, uh, Chen Po, Yao, um, Ling, and there is a boy who is named uh, Cricket, who is the reference to Cricky, of course. Um, but as I mentioned, Mulan's family's um, symbol is a phoenix, and she kind of sees this phoenix a few times leading her toward the camp, and she comes up with her name to uh, Juan Jun, uh, sorry, Juan Jun, 
um, to be her disguise name. So instead of Kang, she actually has it ready right off the bat. So I would assume that she had a little more time of planning and her travel to the uh, the garrison for training. And, you know, so she's introduced to, you know, all these others. And, and she's introduced to, there's kind of two characters that are a representation of Shang in this. We have, um, I think it was Commander, Commander Tung, who is, um, a, you know, he's the commander of the garrison of the training squad. And he actually, I do believe, knew her father, knew Mulan's father in like the previous war. And he, you know, so he kind of, you know, he, you know, he's like, you know, I guess, you know, it's still, it's like he clear, he didn't like, you know, keep in touch with him, obviously, because he didn't know that he didn't have a son. Um, but we have him there and he kind of is a bit of a mentor to Mulan. And then the other one that's kind of the Shang, uh, character is, um, Jen Huang Hui. Hope I didn't mispronounce that. I probably did. Again, I apologize if I if I'm mispronouncing the names. I'm sorry. Um, he is kind of the uh, other Shang character. Um, him and Mulan have a bit of a problem in the beginning, um, but throughout the course of all the training and everything, we see Mulan getting better and better, and all of the others getting better and better. Um, we actually see a few characters where um, one of the characters that we see he's not one of the three. He's this other character because one of the tasks that they have to do is they have to, you know, climb up the, you know, walk up this, you know, cliff pass um, staircase with like, you know, you know, jar, uh, you know, buckets of water on, you know, on over their backs and everything. Um, and he keeps, you know, dumping out the water and everything. And of course, the commander sees this and, you know, he's, you know, exiled from the army because he, you know, was being dishonest, you know, loyal, brave and true. And, you know, you know, Mulan does a lot of, you know, she volunteers a lot for like guard watch and we see her, you know, she, you know, has to keep, you know, keeping the bindings on and everything. And it's, you know, causing, you know, kind of, you know, that's going to hurt a lot if you have that on all day long and she can't even take it off at night when she sleeps because they all sleep together and, you know, the, in the bunk houses. So she can't even undo that. We watch, you know, the, the different, the different characters all just like being fun with each other, but also, you know, they kind of tease Mulan a bit, but then she teases back. Um, we find out that some of them are already engaged. I think it's Ling explains that he's already engaged. Um, and, you know, he has a match and everything. And, you know, the others are talking and everything. And like they ask, you know, you know, uh, Huan Jun, um, you know, what kind of girl he wants or that type of stuff. And like, you know, I think it's kind of, she ends up explaining, well, what about, you know, a girl that like, you know, speaks her mind type of a thing. And they kind of like, eh. um, but like a lot of the guys don't necessarily know how to talk to girls. Um, and one of the things that they end up doing is there is still kind of the, the bath scene because at one point, you know, Mulan has, you know, she's been avoiding taking baths and showers with the other men because of course they're going to notice something. So she ends up going to this, you know, lake, pond, whatever that's near the garrison. And she, you know, bathes and cleans herself up and everything. But unfortunately, um, um, uh, Hong Hui, um, shows up and he you know, gets into the water with her. And she spends like the whole time, like keeping everything below the surface, except for her head. And, she kind of, she basically very coldly tells him to leave, um, because he, he kind of, like, is apologizing a bit for, like, how kind of mean he was a little bit at the beginning and the conflict they had at the beginning, and, you know, she, you know, but he's, you know, they've gotten better and everything, um, and he just, you know, he does leave, he had, you know, he had, you know, he kind of, he, he doesn't understand why Mulan is standoffish, but, you know, he, you know, he still kind of leaves. He still wants to be her friend, his friend, because he doesn't know it's a girl and everything. Um, he still kind of wants to be, you know, his friend, but, you know, eh, you know, he, he leaves anyway. Um, the next day, Mulan is called in to meet with Commander um, Tung, 
who reveals uh, she thinks that he's that he figured out that she's a woman uh, but it's he actually reveals that he knows that she has she and he offers her a higher position and everything because of her skill and her chi and everything and he even i think at some point i don't remember if it's this scene or a later scene but he does say that you know when all of this is over i have a daughter back home and she's of marrying age and i would you know like to have you and her meet type of a thing and i'm like hey <laughs> you know um in the concept of the culture at the time, you know, if your father came across, a, a, you know, if your father was in the military and he came across a soldier that he thought was, you know, a very worthy and honorable so soldier and everything, then, you know, if he had a daughter, you know, I would assume that that would have been a very common practice um, to, you know, have the soldier and the daughter marry. Um, or if it was like maybe he had a sister or if he had like a niece or something if he didn't have a daughter um, probably something along those lines um, was fairly common um, you know you know if you're impressed enough with someone you know yeah I mean like that's still kind of done to, I mean throughout the course of history that has been done you know countless times um, even today it's still a little bit done not as much but still in some cases you know a, you know arranged marriages are still made matchmaker marriages are still done um but you know the commander is very impressed by her and he does actually learn that she has chi and he allows her to train with it more and you know and she you know gets better and better with it and she actually i think ends up in like another um you know combat situation between her and um huang Hu, huang hui um, and, you know, they, you know, but she beats him and that's kind of where it's revealed that she has chi and then, you know, he, you know, you know, encourages her to use it more, encourages, um, you know, want you to use it more. Uh, we keep coming back and forth to, um, seeing, you know, Bori Khan and his troops attacking more and more of these villages. Um, and we're a little more introduced to the witch character. Um, I'm going to try to pronounce this. I'm probably going to botch it. Um, uh. Jian and sorry, Jian Niang, um, who I love her outfit. I very much love her outfit. Um, but you know she you know shape shifts and everything, and you know so she's still going to you know go in and try and you know dis you know disrupt the garrisons from the inside as the you know the uh, Rowan attack. Um, Bori Khan was actually a real person. Um, he had been kind of a, well, in his mind, he's kind of a freedom fighter type thing from the, you know, the chi mind of the Chinese, he's kind of a terrorist. Um, so, you know, there's that, you know, dichotomy of history and, you know, the history is written by the victors. Um, I do think various points of this movie were actually filmed in China themselves, in China itself. Um, and I think for some reason on the bonus features, I heard something about like New Zealand. So there may have been a few times where they had to film something in New Zealand to get like the right atmosphere, the right type of environment that would have been around at the time frame when the movie is taking place. Um, but, you know, one of the things that they, you know, it's, it's time for, you know, the garrison to head out to go and, you know, fight and help. And there's no, you know, there's no interfering little mischievous dragon in this one, of course. Um, there's the phoenix, and it keeps kind of appearing a little bit, representing, you know, it's watching over Mulan. And uh, what ends up happening is, um, you know, the, the army has their virtues, you know, the loyal, brave, and true. And, you know, she's fine at the loyal, she's fine at the brave. It's the true that keeps throwing her off because she's, you know, hiding who she actually is. She's hiding the fact that she's a woman, that it's not even her real name, that, you know, she's, you know, what she's doing and everything. And what ends up happening is the, um, you know, they go and they have to end up fighting, you know, Bori Khan and his group. And Mulan kind of ends up getting separated from the rest of her garrison, from the rest of her troops. And she ends up fighting um, the witch. And the witch keeps like, you know, saying, you know, who are you? You know, type of a thing, you know, you know you're hiding, you know, who are you, blah, 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 blah. And Mulan keeps saying, I'm, you know, a soldier in the Imperial Army again and again and again. You know, I'm Huan Jun, the soldier in, the, in His Majesty's Imperial Army. And, you know, the witch can tell that this is not who you are. And 
what ends up happening is she she disarms Mulan, she hurts Mulan. This is the moment when, as I said, this is the moment when kind of like the Chris, I, I think if I remember correctly in the movie, this is kind of when the crescendo of like reflection comes into play. And we have um, like that, that coming into play, the, 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 the melody in the background, um, along with a little, you know, a few other, you know, uh, you know, line, you know, you know, chords and everything going in there to help heighten what's going on. And we have Mulan finally kind of just screw it. <laughs> screw it, I can't fight like this anymore. She, you know, gets rid of the binding. She, you know, lets her hair down and she, she, you know, I am, you know, Hua Mulan, I am, you know, gonna do this and everything. And she fights off the witch and sends the witch packing. The, the witch doesn't, isn't dead, but she sends the witch packing and, you know, she comes out of the mist and, you know, she fights alongside her, the rest of her garrison and she goes and then she goes and she works her way behind the uh, uh, ruins and she gets them to, you know, she fires from behind them, you know, fires arrows at them from behind and they end up turning and they fire uh, their cannons or so into the mountain and that causes the avalanche and that devastates them, you know, saves the troops and Mulan admits the truth of who she is to her commanding officer and her peers and you know she's told to leave or he'll or you know the commanding officer will kill her you know leave or be killed and she starts working her way home and she is you know then she comes uh, across the witch again and who's you know falcon form flies down talks to mulan and explains to mulan that i went through something very similar to what you went through you know with being called a witch with you know having chi and with being called, you know, being, you know, abandoned because of it, because it's not something that a girl is supposed to have. And she, you know, tries to convince Mulan to come with her and to work with her alongside Bori Khan to just, you know, add to the strength and everything. And like that, you know, she could teach Mulan more um, about Chi. And Mulan, this is, no, I'm not doing that. I'm going to protect my country. And she rides back to the garrison and she tells, you know, Commander Tung that, you know, she's, you know, that the, their Bori Khan is heading toward the capital. He's not dead. Him and the witch are still heading toward the capital along with so many of his forces. And they're still going to try to, you know, head to the capital and kill the emperor. And, you know, he's just like looking at them and she and the, the commander is just like looking at her. And I, it's he does... I think it's kind of like a give and take thing. It's he wants to trust her because she's proven herself beyond the fact that she lied about that one thing. She has proven to be a very good soldier and very, you know, very brave and very loyal. You know, she came back, she's warning them and the rest of the troops actually speak up and they say, we believe Hua Mulan. And then they all head to the capital. And, you know, it's, it's, you know, the Chen Po and Yao and Ling and Cricket and the um, um, Huang Mui and the commander and everything are all making their way to the capital and Mulan is actually beating them. And they get to the capital and um, Bori Khan has apparently made his way to the capital and he is hiding in these, uh, this uh, temple that's under construction that is like an honor to I don't know if it's to the emperor himself, it's to the emperor's father. Um, but we have the emperor, and the emperor is played by Jet Li, so they have to let the emperor do something awesome anyway, because it's like, you have the emperor played by Jet Li, you have to do something awesome with him. Um, <laughs> I'll go over some of the cast a little bit after I finish with this. Um, but, you know, so uh, the emperor's chancellor is actually the witch in disguise and she tells him that you know Bori Khan you know wants to you know fight you and if you beat him he will leave or surrender or whatever at you know this area and you know the emperor gets in all of his you know military regalia his own armor and him and his you know his elite troops head to go and fight Bori Khan at this um construction temple a uh, temple under construction 
he's, you know, ready to fight Bori Khan, and it's kind of an ambush. It's like, you're going to fight them anyway, but it's an ambush. And, you know, they kill a bunch of the soldiers, and then they capture the emperor. And Bori Khan's intention is to burn down this temple with the emperor tied up at the top, so that way the emperor will die. And, you know, hence, you know, eh, eh. Um, and the, the witch has infiltrated the castle, and Mulan and her troops, um, you know, they fight their way into the castle. They have to fight through, you know, some other troops and everything that are there from Bori Khan. Um, and they get their way inside, and Mulan's the one that actually makes her way into the throne room, ready to warn the emperor. But it's, you know, the, the witch is there. Um, Zheng, uh, Zhen Ying, as I said, I probably mispronounced that, is there. And she is very bewildered by the fact that it's this woman leading the army. And she starts flying toward, she flies out of the palace and out of the Imperial Palace and she's flying toward where Bori Khan is and Mulan is following. And what ends up happening is, um, I will put this as it is kind of a bit of a dramatic turn or a little bit too much of a turn in regards to the character doing this, the, the witch doing this, because at one point Bori Khan ends up having an arrow pointed directly at Mulan. Um, and then the witch takes the arrow for Mulan and dies in the process, um, or killed by the arrow. And Mulan then goes and then she has to fight Bori Khan and we get this great fight sequence with like all this gymnastics and flips and everything. And at one point in the a sequence Mulan is standing there and like the, the, the phoenix, you know, the, the visage of the phoenix is there and it's like behind her and it looks like she has the phoenix phoenix wings and she's, you know, jumping all over the place, fighting Bori Khan, has her father's sword and, you know, Bori Khan was ready to, you know, you know, burn the temple down and everything and, you know, she she's able to, you know, defeat Bori Khan and, you know, but he's like laying on the ground on the bottom and like some things are on fire and at one point her sword fell and it kind of got destroyed and she's able to you know untie the emperor and we do get some bad uh, we do get some great things from uh, jet lee because at one point um you know he did fight bori khan on his own and he held his own against bori khan for a little while doing some awesome you know kicks flips awesome things that we get jet lee doing of course because you know you, you got jet lee you gotta use his you gotta use him <laughs> like yes you use him and uh, he, you know, at, at one point, you know, Bori Khan is like on the ground and he's, you know, ready to fire up an arrow to try to kill the emperor. And Mulan is like quickly untying the emperor's hands and he, you know, catches the arrow right before it'll hit him. And then I don't remember if it's like then they, you know, turn the arrow around and then they, you know, fire the arrow back down at Bori Khan. But Bori Khan does die. And, you know, she saved the emperor and everything and I love it. And what ends up happening is, you know, you know, it's, you know, at one point, you know, no, it's Khan is still firing arrows and Merlin like directs one of the arrows back down at him and that kills him. And then we have, you know, the emperor is freed and he's returned to his palace and they heard, hold this big ceremony and all the, all the soldiers are there and everything that were part of Mulan's garrison. And we have a moment in the movie, which I love. Um, I love, 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 because they do Ming, they do bring uh, Ming Na Wen into the movie, and I love it because um, we have this moment where we have this, this very beautifully elegant, elegantly dressed uh, woman who is just referred to as esteemed guest in the credits, um, you know, is walking up to the emperor, and from, you know, from behind, we kind of think that, oh, this is, this is going to be Mulan, you know, in this, you know, great outfit to, you know, you know, meet the emperor in front of all of the court and everything and it's actually it turns and it's Ming Na Wen which I loved and she was like she's like she gets to introduce Mulan to the emperor and I love it and she's like your, your majesty I present to you Hua Mulan and she moves aside and then Mulan is still standing there in her you know battle armor and everything you know still in her you know battle Ever, you know, battle armor and everything, you know, still, you know, dirtied from the battle and everything. And the emperor offers her, you know, a commission and everything. And, you know, you know, with, you know, the honoring the, those that fought alongside Mulan and everything. And he offers to make her, a com you know, an officer in the army. But she, you know, deciding that she has a duty to her family and she has to return home. And so, you know, she travels off. She 
still has her horse and she travels back to her village and she arrives on a day when her sister is me uh, meeting with the matchmaker um and her sister is you know a much better impression on the matchmaker than Mulan did um and you know is, you know is going to be married and everything you know has you know a fiance a betrothed ready and you know the whole village is still kind of going and everything and they may not have heard you know what happened with Mulan yet because you know sometimes news doesn't travel super fast um but you know Mulan gets to the village and she rides in and just everybody watches as she shows up and you know the you know the matchmaker is just kind of glaring as Mulan shows in shows up and like every you know the villagers are rejoicing and everything and her father and her mother and her sister, of course, they're welcoming her back and hugging her and just so happy that she's back. And she apologizes to her father that she lost her sword or lost his sword. And she's like, you know, even, you know, bowing and showing respect to him and kind of like showing, you know, you know, she's like, you know, showing, it was like, pleading, you know, like, I, I, I lost your sword. I'm sorry. And it is kind of the same moment. Um from the animated one where it's you know it's like he doesn't care about whatever honors she brought home he's just happy that she's alive and that she's back and we still kind of get something like that although it's a little bit less of a personal moment because it's done with you know everybody around them with, you know the rest of the villagers and everything around them and then is you know and then shortly after that commander Tong shows up on horseback with you know the rest of the uh the you know with the rest of the ones that were part of her garrison and he reiterates the emperor's offer in front of everyone in the village, including the matchmaker who like faints about the emperor's offer for Mulan to become an officer in the army. And he gives her a present of a new sword from the emperor that reads on the one side, it still reads loyal, brave, and true. And then he says, flip it over. And she flips it over. And on the back, it says family. And to show that there, you know, there's more than values of just loyal, brave, and true, that family is also a very, a, a for very important value to have. And I don't remember if she actually accepts the offer or not, or if it's just kind of left open-ended, um, but that's where that part ends. Um, for the cast of the movie, we have, uh, I apologize, I'm probably going to mispronounce these again, apologize. Uh, we have... Uh, Liu Yifei as Hua Mulan. We have Donnie Yen as Commander Tong. We have Jason Scott Lee as Bori Khan. We have uh, Yosun An as uh, Jen uh, Huang, uh, Huang Hui, who is the romantic interest. Um, we have um, Gong Li as uh, Jian Niang, who is the, the witch, the falcon hawk character. We have Jet Li, of course, as the emperor. We have uh, Tiz Ma as Huang Fa, sorry, Huang Zhu, who is Mulan's father. We have uh, Rosalind Chao as Huan Li, who is Mulan's mother. Um, uh, Jian Teng as Huan Zhu. I can mis I think I pronounced that correctly, as Mulan's sister. Um, we have um, Jun Yu as, Cricky, as Cricket, because um, he's, you know, this little, lucky little Cricket. Um, it's just what his mother called him. Um, we have Jimmy Wong as Ling. We have Chen Tang as Yo. And we have um, Dua Mua as, as uh, Po, as Chen Po. Um, we have uh, Nelson Lee was the Chancellor. It's not a huge role, not as big as um, what Chifu had in the original, but he's there. Um, Cheng Pai Pai, uh, Pai Pai as the matchmaker. Um, and then we have Ming Na Wen as the, you know, the esteemed guest that introduced Mulan. Uh, then we have some of the songs. Um, we have a new song by Christina, Christina Aguilera that is uh, Loyal, Brave, and True. And she has a new version of uh, version of that. And then there is she does a new version of Reflection um, that are the end credit songs. And then the other end credit song that they have is actually uh, Reflection in Mandarin, which is actually sung by Liu Yufei, Yufei, who is Mulan. So it's like not only can she fight and everything, you know, do all this great acting and fighting and everything and stunts, she can sing. 
And on the bonus features, they actually talk about the fact that it was like, yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, it's not a, it's not a musical movie or anything like that. But the, you know, the director still wanted to bring in, you know, reflection as one of the songs. And you know, they said brought Christina Aguilera back to do that and to sing "Loyal, Brave, and True." And they do that, but then they found out that Yi Fei can sing. So they had her come in, of course, and record the Mandarin version of Reflection to be on the end credits. And it's still beautiful. And like they talk in the film, they talk on the bonus features that Yi Fei had, you know, she grew up watching, you know, the original Mulan. And Yi Fei is actually 33 years old. <laughs> okay, she's 33 years old. So she was like, you know, 31, 32 when they were making this movie. And she does not look it. <laughs> she does not look 33 years old. I swear to God, she does not. Um, and, you know, but, you know, so she, you know, so she can do all that, but she talked about how she, you know, you know, listened to that song so much growing up. And then she actually sang a version of it when she was auditioning for um, getting into the, the acting college or whatever that she went to. Um, another slight trivia note in regards to Mulan, in regards to the casting of this. Um, first of all, Yi Fei did the entire audition on like no sleep after flying and having jet lag from China. Like she flew from China to the U.S. to do the audition, and she was doing it on like no sleep. And she did amazing in the audition. It's just like okay, yes, give that girl props. So many props to her for that. Um, this is actually, I think, the second movie that I have seen her in. Um, there is a movie that came out in 2008 that is called The Forbidden Kingdom uh, that stars Jet Li, who is, of course, the emperor in this, and Jackie Chan. And uh, Yi Fei is in it as uh, her name in it is, I think, a Golden Sparrow is what she refers to as herself throughout the movie. Um, it is um, it is a English film. It was... Uh, made by a u.s company i don't remember the company exactly but it's about you know this kid that you know was like very obsessed with karate movies and everything and then he ends up getting transported back to like ancient japan and they do like it's references to like the 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 you know the um the the, the monkey and you know the monkey king and everything and you know the you know uh, Sun Wukong's Journey to the West, that type of a thing. And, you know, it's like Jackie Jan's there, Jet Li's there, they train the kid, you know, Yi Fei's character is there, she's awesome. Just go watch the movie. It was a fun movie. The action sequences are great when you have, you know, Jet Li versus Jackie Jan or them having to fight together is just awesome. So just go watch the movie if you, you know, if you want to go watch that. That's just recommendation there. And it's, you know, those two have been together in a movie before. And of course, Jackie Chan can connect back to the original Mulan movie because he's the um, Japanese voice or the Japanese, the Chinese voice for Shang uh, in the animated ones. Um, <laughs> so, you know, that's just, that's just fun there. Um, that's about what we get there for that. Um, as I said, there's not really that many songs beyond the, you know, the Loyal, Brave, and True song. That's the new one, the new version of Reflection that Christina Aguilera sings, and then the Reflection that Yi Fei sings. Um, I loved the photography and the costumes and the layout and action and everything in this movie. I think they did an amazing job with the remake. Um, and I, I'm perfectly fine with it not being a musical. I'm like, I can perfectly understand why they didn't want to make that into a musical. You know, they didn't really turn the, uh, the, the live action Cinderella that they did, um, from, you know, several years ago. They didn't really make that a musical. There's still musical undertones from it and everything, but it's not really a musical. Um, you know, with this, it's like, I perfectly understand why it's not a musical and I'm fine with it. And I still love the fact that they bring in, you know, the melodies from the the songs from the original that like play their way into you know the training sequences or the the ones where she's getting ready to go and have to meet with the matchmaker or the you know the reflection when she's you know standing up in the fight in her fight against the the witch to and then to go and fight the fight Bori Khan's men you know her you know finally realizing of okay I can't keep hiding I have to get up and do this I have to just stop hiding stop pretending and fight as me because then I'm not holding anything back and I love that I just I love what they did with the movie as you can probably tell by the you know how long I've been talking about it um as I've said the next one will be Tarzan 
and that should just be a one uh, one video um, one video thing because there's not too much with Tarzan because it's not really in Once Upon a Time as far as I can remember. There's no live action Disney one that they did as far as I can remember. I'll still be double checking on that. Uh, it's mostly just Tarzan itself. The sequel that they did that's like him and Jane and then like the Tarzan 2 that I've only seen once and I really don't care for where it's him as a kid. And so it's like the entire movie is a training sequence. Okay. Um, and then there's Kingdom Hearts stuff and you know House of Mouse stuff for that but not too much else. And then and then it'll be uh, Fantasia 2000 and then Dinosaur and then I'll be taking a short break from the Disney movie so we'll see when I get back to those because I wanted to work on like the Digimon stuff which hopefully will be up by the time this goes up so that's what we got for this um, I thank you very much for watching I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you have a nice rest of your day bye Ooh. bye Hua Mulan, your actions have brought disgrace and dishonor to this regiment, to this kingdom, and to your own family. But your loyalty and bravery are without question.